first of all, thanks for the invitation. Um, I have to apologize up front because I was supposed to give my talk tomorrow, but uh, I had some change of flights and I'm flying uh, in a few hours. So I, I had to move my talk today. And, and thanks for the organization and uh, allow me to, to do that. And uh, I have to apologize for all of you that you're not going to be able to hear what killed Elvis until later today uh, by Dr. <laughs> Lars. So uh, I was given the task to talk about uh, original the medical management of a refractory constipation. And I, I made a few changes to that because uh, by default, the medical management of refractory constipation, refractory constipation means failure to medical therapy. So it, my talk will be very short. I wouldn't have much to talk about. So I decided to try to emphasize it on how to evaluate the patients that have uh, a refractory constipation and some of the uh, potential therapies that we might have before we consider uh, surgical procedures in these patients. So today we're going to be talking about uh, a little bit about functional constipation, which is the most common type of constipation in children. And um, we're going to be talking about the, the how do we evaluate patients that do not fall into that category and they uh, fail medical therapy? And we're going to be talking about, uh, about all the armamentary that we have available for this. And we're also going to be talking about um, some of the potential treatments along the way that we might discover by uh, doing those tests. So talk about functional constipation. By, by definition, by wrong criteria, it's um, in infants and toddlers is at least two of the following, two or fewer defecations per week, at least one episode of incontinence, uh, history of testis stool retention, history of painful hard bowel movements. And after uh, between four and 18 uh, years of age, is, is very similar. It's just changed a little bit on the, on the timing. But um, in general, this is, this is what we typically see uh, where most of the patients, uh, probably 90, 95% of the, of the pediatric constipation is going to fall in this category. And most of them will eventually respond to um, medical uh, therapy. And let's talk, or, or at least to some dietary changes. Um, we know, for example, that in general, that um, from what, also from what uh, Dr. Lembo has been talking about, like, there is no real evidence that, um, that dietary changes really make a huge difference in constipation. Most of the meta-analysis done in pediatrics, not just for, uh, for functional constipation, but also for intractable constipation, uh, they, they, have, they found no significant uh, evidence that uh, dietary fiber really makes, makes a big difference. So we think that maybe it's, an, uh, it's a factor that, that precipitates uh, constipation or maybe starts, is the trigger for constipation sometimes, but once they become constipated, they don't really respond just to dietary fiber. They, most of them will need something else, uh, especially children. The reason is because in children, the vast majority of the times, we are talking about a behavioral component that you know, diet will not address that uh, completely. So we have, to, uh, we have to do something else. 